to the Hire Rockstar Talent Podcast. Today we're going to talk about the eight qualities of destructive employees. You know, those new candidates, the ones that come in and you interview them and they say that they're perfect, they know everything, right? They've done everything, they've never called out, they're never late, right? They portray themselves as the best thing since sliced bread. You know, but sometimes when you hire someone, you don't always get what you think. But when you find out the truth many times, it's too late. You've already brought them in and they already start to spread poison in your, in your environment and with your, your employees, You're causing chaos. This is a dark threat. It's a real problem that we gotta face and we gotta get real good at identifying the liars, right? The scam artists, the, the wolf in the sheep's clothing. So are you good at this right now? Can you hold someone accountable? What if we had a way to hold them accountable before we ever get to meet them? So these terrible employees, once they get into our environment, you know, it's hard to spot them before they get into our environment, but man, once they get in, they're really easy to spot. They're lazy, they're incompetent, they're inconsistent, you know, but that's the, that's the silent killer, right? And you know, the minute we turn our back, man, these are the guys that will stab you, right? They'll steal from you, they'll go get another job, they'll, you know, cause, you know, drama and shenanigans with all the other employees, all this chaos and panic, right? And then what do they do? What do they do when they cause all of this, this destruction in your business? They just move on and go to the guy down the street, right? And then what happens is now the cycle continues in another business. And if you're not careful, then you're going to bring in a new person to cause the exact same thing that you just got rid of. My mom used to have this, she used to talk to other business owners on this road we were on. She used to call it shoveling the bad employees down the road to each other. So she would try to talk to the other business owners to say, hey, I just want to give you a heads up that you may want to watch yourself on this one. This is why I created the smart system, because this is the stuff that I was tired of. Right, so let's talk about the eight qualities, right? The eight things that we got to identify and that we have to address as business owners ASAP, the business owners that are listening to this. This whole subject got inspired by an article I read in Inc. Magazine, and uh, I want to thank this guy, Jeff Hayden, that wrote the article. So the first quality is these people say things like, that's not my job, right? These people are the super cancerous people. How many times have you heard this? And it drives you crazy, right? Especially when you're a small company, right? When you're a small company and people have to do multiple things, right? Period. Like you, you gotta do multiple things. You gotta be able to do different positions and different tasks, right? And it's important, especially in small companies, because otherwise now the boss is out there and he has to bridge all of the gaps of, of people's skill sets and what they can and can't do. You know, I remember my dad, my dad worked for this company called York Steakhouse. I mean, that's way back in the day. And I remember one day he comes and gets, he got, came and got me and he said, just play along with what I'm gonna do. And he, we had like six or seven people training. So you can imagine now, right? He, he grabs me and these seven people and we're walking to the bathroom. And he literally puts his tie in his shirt and he said to the, to the you know, six or seven people, he said, we're gonna clean the bathroom. So that way, number one, you get to see it done. And number two, you know that I would never ask you to do something that I haven't done myself. And I learned a lot that day, that was pretty cool, right? So any task that an employee is asked to do, we are willing to do it as leaders and, and owners, right? So they need to be able to do it too. You know, I remember this lady uh, worked for me and she got frustrated, right? She, she didn't know what she had when she worked for me, but she ended up leaving and going to a company called Puppagino's. And then she came back one day and she said, Alan, can I talk to you? She said, uh, I, I don't like it over there. And I'm like, well, what happened? Like, tell me what, what's going on. And she said, uh, man, I had to cut tomatoes and peppers and onions. And you know, I just, I don't like doing that. And I'm like, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, well, what did you think was going to happen? You went to a pizza place. Like, what did you think you were going to do? Transmissions? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Unbelievable, right? So number two, they think that they've paid their dues, right? How many times have you, hear, you heard someone say, well, I've, you know, I've worked here for two years. Well, I, I don't even know what that means. Okay, great that you've worked here for two years. I appreciate it. But, you know, those two years haven't been perfect. Those two years have been very rocky and bouncy. Right? You've made mistakes. You've been late. You, there's been customer complaints. You broke things. You didn't. You didn't come to work. You actually left for a month and then came back. So, for you to sit here and say to me like I'm supposed to 
you know, put you on this pedestal, you know, you've arrived now that you've been here for two years. What does that even mean? Right? What does that even mean? If I have to pay my mortgage and I'm, I'm having trouble making the monthly payment, if I call the mortgage company and say, hey man, I'm having some trouble paying my mortgage, but good news though, I've paid it on time for two years. You know what the mortgage company's saying to me? Tough. I don't care. I'm glad that you paid for the last two years on time. That's really, you know, thank you. But you got to keep paying. You got to keep doing it. And this is what happens with many employees is they feel like just because they've been, been there, they don't have to do other things. That, you know, they're beyond that at some point. When really the reality is, is we have to flip that around and you have to continue to perform. You have to continue to produce. Just like the mortgage company said, you have to keep paying the mortgage. That's how this works. Because you don't own the house, Alan. We own the house together. And as long as you keep paying, eventually I'll go away one day. And this is the part that people don't understand, right? But they'll say things like, you know, I do everything. I remember in the old days, when I was with the Dunkin' World, we actually grew up from a place where we baked the donuts. We actually cut the donuts on the table. And I remember watching many bakers, they would get real frustrated in the back room. It was almost like they felt like the whole business was them. Many of them would say things like, you know, I'm gonna open my own shop and, you know, I do everything. And, you know, they just so overinflated their value. When really what they did was one little piece of the business, right? In the event they were able to get up the, the money together and go open their own shop, here's what ended up happening many times, right? Didn't happen every time, but it happened many times. The minute things started to get hard, they would go in the back room and just start baking, right? Because that's what they were good at. They were really technicians and that was their thing. They weren't managers, they weren't people people. They didn't understand how to put schedules together. They didn't understand payroll. They didn't understand the importance of getting the money to the bank because you got checks floating and clearing. They just lost touch with all the other aspects of the business and they reverted to being a technician and going in the back and cutting donuts. They didn't realize that there's so many other facets to the business and actually making the product is one spoke in the wheel of a much bigger wheel. You know, now they would get kind of kicked in the pants and they'd say, well, it was a lot harder than what I thought, right? So all of a sudden now they learned a, a, a massive lesson that cost them, you know, in some cases, hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know, when people say that they've paid their dues, they're basically saying to you, well, then I don't, I don't need to work hard anymore. And that's not right, right? Because today it's about performance. It's about you continuing to do. What is the first thing a customer says if they come in and they have a bad experience? That they've been coming into your, your business for 10 years right? But today they had a bad experience. So the first thing they do is they go, that's it. I'm not coming in anymore. You'll never see me again. That's the standard that we're held to. So guess what? We got to hold employees to that standard too. So number three, they think experience is a tangible commodity, right? So they'll say things like, well, I've worked at 10 different places. You know what? I, I think it would have been better had you said to me, I worked at one place for 10 years, not 10 places you know, in a year. That's a big difference. That's telling us something. That's a red flag, right? But that's not what happens. At, at interviews, they tell you what you want to hear. Well, I've done this and I've done that. And, yeah, and, and it's telling me that you don't stick anywhere and that you, the minute things get hard, you just leave and you give up. I mean, experience is important, but does it always translate into better skills? I don't think so. Not all the time. It's more the doing, the showing up. I, you know, if you have a B player that is there every day, that's something to work with. But if you have an A player that's only there 50% of the time, how good are you when you're not there? You gotta also watch the old dogs because a lot of times old dogs can't learn new tricks. People don't like change. They like to do things their way. They like to be set in their ways. Today's episode is sponsored by Smart Systems. Are you tired of your best people being poached? You know, stolen? Smart helps you create unpoachable rock stars. Check out the link below today. If your experience can't translate into better skills and better performance, guess what? It means nothing. It's worthless. So sometimes saying I have experience, it's basically like saying I'm not willing to change. Number four, they lead the conversation after the conversation. You know these people, right? These are the people that yes you to death. You know, you tell them something, you know, maybe you have like a little meeting and you tell everybody, hey, this is how we're going to be doing things. We're going to be doing it this way from now on. And they go, yeah, 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 yeah. And then the minute you turn around, they start running their mouth about all the things they didn't like. When you gave them the moment, you said, does anybody have a question? They were too chicken shit to, to ask a question there, right? You know, the, my wife, I had this one particular thing with my wife and it just reminded me of this. 
So my wife was complaining all week about her elbow and her back and all these different things were happening. And I said, well, I'll go to the doctor with you. She was going to the doctor like the next day. And I said, all right, when we go to the doctor, make sure you tell the doctor everything that's happening. So she puts on the, the little gown and, you know, talks to the doctor and asks a couple of questions. And I'm sitting there and I'm listening. And the doctor asks her that dreaded question. All right, is there anything else? Anything else I need to know? And she literally looks at the doctor and says, no, everything's fine. And I'm like, whoa, hold on. Like, what are you talking about? Like, tell him about the elbow and the back and the butt. Like, all the stuff you've been complaining about all week. Right, right now is your opportunity. Tell him. This is what happens, right? So you've got this person, and now they're like a tough guy behind the scenes. They're complaining on texting and, you know, Snapchatting people or whatever all this stuff is that people do today. Rather than just say, hey, you know, well, I don't like this, or, or we could, what do you think about this? Could we do this better? I'm not clear about this, right? But that's not what, what people are. So these people need to go because if they're talking about after the fact, it's like saying, you know, I don't agree and I'm gonna do whatever I wanna do anyway. It's, it's just, it's not right. So number five, they feast. These, can't, these people, destructive people, they feast on gossip, right? If you have to say something about someone, then that person should be in the room. And anytime I get someone that comes to me and they, they, they're complaining about someone, I'm like, hold on, let's call them in here. And it's amazing how the whole story changes, right? These people waste time and energy, right? They, they just suck it out of you, the life out of you. We have a culture in our restaurant called care. One of the things that we focus on is what's called negative speak. People talking negatively and gossiping and this kind of thing. And we make a commitment to that culture and we tell people, listen, you can't complain about other people without the other person being there. So when these people say things like, you know, they're gossiping and they say, did you hear what they did? It's like really saying, I have nothing better to do in my life than talk about other people. So number six, they use peer pressure to hold other people back, right? And employees working hard, busting their butt, you know, to, to create value. And then the other employee says to them, why are you working so hard? You're making the rest of us look bad. This is what the entitled people say, the lazy people. This is what they say, right? This is very destructive. These are the people we have to pay attention for. And we have to get them away from the rest of the crew. You know, it's not fair to the people that are working hard. This is one of the things that I've created in the smart system is to fight back exactly this, right? And this is why compensation needs to be done on an individual basis rather than across the board to everybody. It has to be based on production and availability, period. So the busy buddies who are worried about, you know, what other people are making and what other people are doing, they're asking all the wrong questions. You know, the kind of questions they should be asking is, Man, how, what things do I need to do? What changes do I need to make to get what they're getting? Because they're, they're doing things much better than I am, and I, I want what they got, right? That's the stuff. That's next level stuff. Because if they did that and they asked those questions, there, there's, there's some simple answers that they may not want to hear. You have to make a change. You have to do something a little different. You need to get up a little earlier. You need to fix that thing and come in on this day, right? You know, this is the change that we're trying to make in people. And destructive people, they don't want to do it. They just want what they want. They want their cake and they want to eat it too. And this is why we have to get rid of them. You know, saying you're working too hard is like saying no one should work hard because I'm lazy and I don't want to work hard and I'm willing, unwilling to do the things that are required to improve myself. So number seven. They rush to grab the glory. I did this, not we did this. This kind of person, and you know you've heard this before. You know, nothing that's important that's ever accomplished was done on your own. It wasn't done in a silo. You weren't the only one that does it. We have a restaurant, so if you made a fast coffee or a fast sandwich, well, what about the people that did all the prep work so you were able to be in that position to, to execute that product? You know, there were other people involved. You're just not giving them any credit. And this is what destructive people do. I don't know, maybe they were mentally abused or something, constantly told that they weren't good enough. And this is why they do that. I don't know. So how many people do you know like this? You know, they constantly say, you know, tell you all day long what they did. They'll walk all the way up over to you and say, oh, just so you know, I emptied the trash. Yay, you know, Hercules, Hercules, like who cares, right? Well, I'm glad you did it, I'm happy you did it, but why do you gotta tell me every step of the way of everything you did? If I did twice the stuff, like I'm not gonna come out and find you, It's you know, it's tit for tat, who did more of what, like, don't get sucked into that stuff, man, right? 
because then you become like them. My daughter Ahadum uh, will have this saying when she's around people like this. She'll kind of look at them and she'll go, who hurt you? <laughs> like, who, why, why do you say that? Why do you do these things? Like, it's unbelievable. So saying I did all the work is like saying the world re revolves around me and I want you to hear it. I want you to see everything that I do. It's like they need, you know, they need this pat on the on the head, rub the the pat on the belly and the rub on the head, right? Whatever it is, right? They need this. So the last one is they rush to throw other people under the bus. Oh, I hate this one. Doesn't matter what happens, you know, it's always someone else's fault, right? Well, well, the customer ordered a cup of coffee and it was made wrong. Well, that's not what they said. I didn't do that. No, I listened to them. They said that. Like who? gives a shit, right? Just fix it. Like, is the juice worth the squeeze? We're gonna fight with a customer about whether they said sugar or not. Like, just make them a new one. Sometimes, you know, and today with cell phones and stuff, the customer could be wrong. They could be distracted and they say the wrong thing. You know, so the customer is always right, not totally true today, but we need to make the customer feel that they're right. And we just gotta fix the error and move on because it's just not worth it, right? So. You know, the people who step up and fix the issue, regardless of whose fault it is, these are the guys that we want, right? Just fix it. These are our future rock stars. When you see someone just jump in and say, yeah, no problem, we got that, pay attention to that one, because that's the kind of person that you want, not the egotistical person, the entitled person who has to be right, right? When they say things like, I didn't do it, they're basically saying, well, we're, we're not in this together. So now tomorrow when you go back into your business and you're starting to see the people that are around you that exhibit these qualities, you'll be able to know what to do to identify them, create the awareness of who they are and what they are, or maybe have those hard conversations and tell them what you're seeing that them do so you can fix it. Or maybe you make a plan to eliminate them. So thank you so much for listening. So right now I want you to do three things for me. I want you to hit like on this podcast. I want you to hit subscribe and I want you to hit the notification button. Ciao for now, we'll see you next time.